comes the Matrix. Whammo time! Makes it up, Marion! Elevates and detonates! Blocked by Marion. He's gonna put it on the floor, goes to the hole! The Matrix thunderous dunk! Wow! He took off outside the lane! And there's Marion, he said, get that out of here! Back to Marion for three. Shazam! The Matrix! And then stolen by Marion! Knocked away there by the Matrix. The Matrix is everywhere. Beautiful pass to Marion, and that's a career high now. Nobody in the league better shoots that floater. Grab there by Nash. Shoot, shoot from the Suns on the run. Lays it up. Marion! And almost intercepted. To Marion! All right, Sean, thank you so much for having us here at your home. <laughs> um, we're here now, you got the, uh, the guitars behind us in this, uh, this part of the guest house. And man, you got a collection. I wanted to do something a little different. Everybody traditionally do jerseys and stuff. So I, I wanted to do guitars. The Phoenix Suns jersey was, I, guitar was the first guitar I actually got mm -hmm. it. And then it, it uh, after I was looking at some stuff and I saw, I was like, it just brained on me to start doing, you know, saying my, my uh, doing all, 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 all the, t for every team I played for, which came out pretty nice. And you yeah. talked about your love of music and the vinyls that you have. And I mean, that's a huge passion. And then if you go downstairs here, you got the picture of Michael Jackson, <laughs> Prince, and Rick James. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I'm a music guy. I've always been a music guy. I love, I'm an R and B first guy. And, uh, but, uh, you know, just, it's just me. It's my personality. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, I collect toys. I do all that stuff. And you're still hooping. You got, the, you got your own like, practice court here. You got your buddies that show up. And uh, how often are you playing? And how's the body feeling? The uh, body's hurt. But, uh, you know, we play, uh, we play, I try to play uh, every, every Saturday when I'm here. Get after it, get a little sweat in, talk a little smack to each other, have some little fun, and then, uh, then get, the, get the Saturday going. I'm shooting content, dude. Hey, go, go get it. Come back and get the hand off. Right here, he's the basket. <laughs> the guitar, the guitar, he coming, he coming. No, 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 no. No, no. When we now start talking about your career in Phoenix with the Suns mm -hmm. and going into the Ring of Honor, as you start to look back on that career, those those days in Phoenix and the upcoming ceremony, what I guess, what are the memories? What's what's standing out for you in terms of uh, what's hitting you hardest right now? Man, how fast it went by. You know, um, you know, it's, it's crazy because, uh, you know, I, I've been watching um, NBA pack at the package. So, you know, they, they show classic games a lot. They show a lot of the games from uh, Western Conference Finals or any some, especially during that time. And uh, when we first went to small ball. And uh, it's just like, you know, it's crazy how it, it just, it just seemed like it was just yesterday, but it's, it's been 15 plus years. <laughs> and if you open up the media guide and start looking at the uh, top five, top 10 list all time in Suns history, I mean, you're literally top five in almost every category. <laughs> um, what are you most proud of when it comes to those numbers and that kind of production? You know, I, I, had, a, I had a personal goal, man, that I, I wanted to, to leave an imprint on this game. I wanted to play 15 years and I wanted to leave an imprint on the game. I did both. Jerry Colangelo said this to me one time. He was like, he's like, yeah, Sean, you don't get the attention that you deserve, you know, but sometimes you can, you can, you can be under, you, can, you say I was underrated all the time. And I was like, why is that? And um, he was like, well, sometimes you can be so underrated, you be overrated. In the way he said it, and I was like, "It's very interesting how you say that." But he's like, "No, no." He's, but but you 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 are well well more than deserving of what you've done and what you've accomplished. It's been truly amazing. That's a steal by Mary. The Nash, Nash, right down the center. Mary leaves it up. That's a blade. That's far to all the Suns, and there's Mary. He said, "Get that out of here." He's everywhere. You go back to the day that you were drafted by the Phoenix Suns, the <laughs> 1999 draft. With the ninth pick of the 1999 NBA draft, the Phoenix Suns select Sean Marion from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. We didn't know, like nobody knew who the Suns were gonna use that ninth pick on. What 
tell us what was going through like your mind and the pre-draft process. And if you felt really confident that you were going to become a Phoenix Sun. So I know I wasn't going past nine. I went through all my workouts, right? Of course, Phoenix is by far my, my, favorite, my best workout because you know, I had all the top small forwards in my workouts here and I murdered all of them. Everybody who's in that <laughs> small forward, whoever's in there and that, that was supposed to be You posted, didn't just outplay him, murdered, murdered them. them. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even close. Cause remember Jonathan Bender was coming out of high school that year. Oh, yeah. They projected him. He went top five, he went mm-hmm. five, you know, all these guys, but I didn't care. It didn't even matter. I knew where, you know what I'm saying? I knew where I wanna go by. I wasn't gonna go slide past. I knew I wasn't going past nine. I went in and killed that workout and killed all those guys in the workout. <laughs> Bad. Well, they liked me a lot when I came out here to work out, and we had some like some top prospects in that draft up here. You know, I did real good against them, and uh, I think they really made a good impression out here when I came. So, uh, as far as that concerns, I guess that made <laughs> made a big impression. It was just about the slate and what the teams wanted and what they needed to fit them at the time. And I was like, we were sitting there looking at it. And I was like, you know, I could have probably went higher if I really, I think it'd be really forced this year. But I didn't really want to. I, I, I felt exactly where I was supposed to be at. Talk about your coaches. I mean, you go from Ainge to Skiles to Frank Johnson to Mike D'Antoni. How do you look back on the influence that they had on your career and, and maybe even which one really brought the best out of Sean Marion? So I came in with Danny Ainge and uh, he was just a straight, candid guy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? A little, little comedy, but he didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't bite his tongue for nobody, really. He just said what he felt, <laughs> and that was it. And, you know, for me being, I was the only rookie on the team when I came in. I'm going to tell you, this, this is one of the best stories ever. So rest in peace, Uncle Cliffy. So, so we in Flagstaff for training camp, remember? So, like, um, <laughs> so I'm killing Cliff. One morning... Uh, Cliff came in there and said, he said, Rookie, where my damn donuts at? I was like, <laughs> it's like, who are you talking to? He's like, I'm talking to you. I was like, listen, I was like, I'm a grown ass man. And I don't mind giving you some, I know the rookie hazing and stuff. I don't mind giving you some donuts, but you ain't gonna talk to me like that. And he was like, you know what? He never said anything else to me after that. Never sit anywhere. And he can be a really intimidating presence oh, in person. Cliff was a monster. That's my guy, though. <laughs> yeah, like, know. No, that's how I learned a lot of the stuff I did because of him. And everybody still talks about seven seconds or less. Yeah. And when you think about it, and, you know, with Amari and Steve and, you know, all the different players that were a part of that. But so many people say that does not work without Sean Marion. What was your role in seven seconds or less in your Man, mind? Man, to do what it would take to win. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really excited about it at first, but, uh, but hey, it worked and uh, we was able to do it. And, uh, you know, it just, we shocked the world. It was the opening and, and to it, uh, basically the intro to what the league is right now. It's non positionless basketball and everybody's running and gunning now. And it's funny though, seven seconds seven seconds now is actually slow compared to how fast the ball is coming before now. We we got people out the mode of playing stop stop playing two traditional bigs. You don't see it no more. Then uh, the teams that, that do do it though, some of them um, they ain't, they ain't doing it long. And most of the bigs now are perimeter players now anyway. And when so, I say the name Steve Nash. Mm-hmm. I mean, your point guard during those years. Yeah. I mean, he was obviously the orchestrator. The head uh, the of the snake. That, yep, the head of the snake. Yeah. You know, we we all fed up each other. You know, I think uh, we I think we complimented each other so so well on that group. We just well, I think we all elevated each other's game from me, Steve, Joe. So it's funny because when, when people think about seven seconds, that's people don't realize the first year was Q Rich though. So uh, Q Rich was in that group, and then but then uh, Q Rich and Joe Johnson was the first year we went small ball. But then it went to Raja, you know what I'm saying, after that. So, you know, uh, Raja and Boris. So it's, 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 it's crazy. So what part and what team are, 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 is everybody more excited about? The, the, the first year or is it the, <laughs> yeah. the, the later ones? You know what I'm saying? Because it's two different teams. Mm-hmm. It is. It's three of the main, you know, of course, me and yeah. Mario and Steve. But two spots changed after that first year. Yeah. So, like, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. But Q Rich said that this, uh, Q Rich, and this is 100% right, though. He ain't lying. We, we was like the Beatles, dude. Everywhere we went, we was like rock stars, dude. Like, it, it was, it was. We were in New York getting on that elevator in the yeah. bowels of Madison Square Garden and employees of the Knicks 
were rushing towards you guys yeah. for autographs and pictures, like in New York. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Dude, we, we, we took the lead by storm. You know, we, like you said, we started the season off what? Sorry, thirty-one and four. Like, yeah, they was like, "What the hell just hit y'all? <laughs> what the hell just happened?" And Amari Stoudemire, what did his power and fury add to that whole equation? I mean, Stat was just, you know, what I'm saying, he was just a, a beast in the middle, man. He was trying, to, he was trying to put that ball on everybody's neck, <laughs> like no question. Like he was just trying to put. The human, uh, you just trying to posterize you, and uh, it worked out for what four out one in, you know what I'm saying? So, we, we were just we were just running and gunning, man. Spacing, you know, it's funny, we, we, we could be down by 15 points before you know it, we up, we up 15, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In <laughs> three minutes, that's how fast it was, it was, it was happening, and so quick they was like, Man, we was just up, no, no, y'all just lost. <laughs> <laughs> and tips it over. And then stolen by Marion. Well, he didn't get the three, but he got the splash inside. Fun, exciting, yeah, electrifying, was. exhilarating, I mean, but at times frustrating, too, because you guys came so close. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to get that chip that you wanted to attain in Phoenix, and whether it was yeah. a Joe Johnson facial injury or yeah. Raja Bell injury or a suspension against the Spurs, like... When you think back about that, is there still kind of that lingering, man, what if? You know, I really did think we were going to win a championship. You know, I thought um, I thought we had the, the right formula at the time. And just a certain things it can go back and we, we play it all over again. Some things I would try to, to voice my opinion and, and, and change <laughs> to make sure that we did. Did you feel like there was one team that was closer than the others to winning a title? So that first year... I thought that Joe injury was 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 big. Here's JJ, and he's fouled hard. Oh. That could be a flagrant. Fouled hard. Because he got hurt, but he did come back. But he still, it still wasn't the same. And I think we just we, we missed something. We just really missed something. Then when we lost against we lost against Dallas the year they the, the year they they that Miami won the championship after that. I think that was a year. I think everybody. Everybody's picking a different year. Just, no, that's the year I really felt like we should have won the championship. And you kept it going with a variety of point guards. There's like a variety yes. of head coaches, but you had Jay Kidd, you had Steph Marbury, you had Steve Nash. Mm -hmm. Did one of those guys impact you more than the others? I mean, I think most Suns fans oh. are going to go, wow, I mean, the success in the years with Steve Nash, uh, but you obviously also enjoy playing with those other two. Yeah, but so I came in with Jay Kidd. Jay Kidd mm -hmm. gave me that, that opening and it was like one of the few guards. He was like, you get it, you take it. Yeah. My first All-Star was with Steph. Then Steve came out with All-Star with Steve as well. And it's all three of those point guards are totally different from each other. Yeah. They're all totally, you know, Jay Kidd is a, is a walking triple-double. Steph is a is a top 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 ten top five scorer. Yeah, you know, a little more score, scoring mentality. Score, yep. But he facilitates. Yeah, he oh, scores. Yeah. And Steve is more of a facilitator mm -hmm. than you know than the scorer. You know, so he going he a double double guy. So like, you know, those all three of those guys totally game is totally different than each other. So like, that's a testament to, to 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 our team and to myself of having to adjust to these guys. Suns Twitter had a really interesting topic that they tossed out to the fans. Best Suns nickname of all time. <laughs> where should the Matrix land? I mean, personally, where uh, should it land? Personally, I think I got the best nickname yeah. ever. You know what I mean? I'm just biased like that. You, tricks is for kids. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. But, um, I mean, listen, they, they made some great nicknames. Brazilian Blur, Thunder Dan. I mean, is Sir Charles really a nickname? Not really. Uh, know. You know, um, just his name was Sir in front of it. I mean... <laughs> Amari's nickname was Stats, you know what I'm saying? But he, did he really use that like that? Uh, Didn't he give himself that? Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. I love it. Hey, you got to respect it, though. Why We're not? like, what's Stats? Why not? Man, you know, All right, Amari. Why not? Why yeah. not? Marshall, three. Not able to hit this one. Rebound by Marriott. The Matrix is everywhere. All right, when you uh, look back at two instrumental 
figures, people in the Suns organization. I mean, and they are right there at the top. Jerry Colangelo. Yes. And Al McCoy. I know each of them. Shazam. Think about that. The voice of the Suns for 51 years. Voice of the Suns. He's just always a pleasant spirit, man. Just just always guy I love. Coming coming by the scoring stage, saying saying what's up to him, talking to him, and chatting it up. How you feeling? Did you get rid of that cold yet? No, I still got a little bit, man. I'm trying to get your vitamin C. Take your vitamin C. Uh And have a good night at Donovan's, and you'll be fine. No doubt. Okay, thanks. (laughs) Thanks, Trix. Sean Marion, another great game. Well, I did give you a little bit of homework before we traveled out here to see you. And. Mm I want you to think about your top three Phoenix Suns moments. Were you able to come up with? My top three moments are, of course, being drafted. <laughs> I mean, what more can you say than did? You know, um, I-, I love the, the pedicab. That was you on a pedal cab. Your rookie yeah, year. It was just so interesting. I loved it. Arena. I just really yep. loved it. I, one, I, I hope we get. Hopefully, we can find the content. <laughs> After a few minutes, Sean begins to get a handle on his new job. Oh, ah. Oh, oh, I got a crap. Oh, 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 ah, oh. You know what? I actually have to meet somebody, so I'm going to just run. Uh, <laughs> sure? oh. Yeah, no, you're, you're oh, in too no. much pain. I don't oh. want to knock you out, so you need to stretch oh. it out. You need to take it easy. You might need to take a rest of the Oh, you know the Phoenix hidden camera, right? The Phoenix Sun's hidden camera. <laughs> and then, you know, I said me building a court. And but, when you say build a court, that was the court that was named after you in yes, West we, Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, we built a court on uh, the west side of Phoenix, and it was mm-hmm. it was really dope. Though. We we uh, we had we refab. Uh, it was a I think it was a location where mm-hmm. drug dealers and our our drug addicts was going and stuff. Mm-hmm. We cleaned it out, came up, uh, a night built, we gutted it out, did a re- rebuild a uh, education learning center for mm-hmm. kids and stuff, and a nice playground and stuff. It was nice. Let's come back with Nash at three point range. Thanks to Lob, Marion with the catch. Whammo time for the Matrix. Nice between the circles to his left, bounce it over D. I'll give it to Marion, drives in and scores. Pretty play, pretty play. The only way to describe it. So, what is life like? For Sean Marion now. Man, you know, Tom, man, life like right now is it's pretty awesome actually. You know, I'm a father first. You know, I have a nine year old son who's who's awesome. I'm trying to adapt to him a little bit because I'm, I'm a, a first time father though. It ain't every kid is different. So like, I mean, you know, it's my first, my only son. Uh, it's still it's still challenging at times because uh, he's he's learning and uh, he's growing and uh, his personality is, is coming out really much, a lot okay. of much. And right it's going to keep changing. <laughs> I have three kids, but, so he's nine, Sean. Yeah. Right? We have another Sean Marion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. do. What we are do. his passions? Does he like basketball? He does. Does he, he, sports? he does love that. He loves basketball. Like, he plays baseball. He plays a flag football. And um, so, like, you know, he's he's real rounded. So what does he know about the Matrix uh, your NBA career? Because you've been retired how many years now? Almost nine now. Almost nine. Yeah, so. yeah. So... He uh he knows everything about me pretty much though. He's he's very very savvy and um you know, you know all these kids now are computer geeks, so he knows how to go on YouTube and look up old videos of me and stuff. But about two years ago, he really year and a half ago, so he started really, really noticing who I am and and uh he was like he wanted my jerseys and stuff. He really was I was getting him my jerseys before that, but now he really emphasized on what jerseys he wants and all that other stuff, so it's cool. Inside Yao Ming. Oh, he's met at the top by Sean Marion. Yao Ming, oh, slapped away from behind by Sean Marion. Do you take advantage of the lake out here? Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, I don't, I don't go out there as much as I, I want to because I'm on the water already. Mm. So being being right here is enough for me. But uh, we get out there occasionally, you know, jump on jet skis or whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, I have plenty of people, friends and family come through here and they love. We just sit back here and enjoy yourself. We cook and eat and just drink, have a good time. That's great. And like you said, you're spending quite a bit of time in Chicago with your son. And I'm sure you're hitting some Cubs games. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm a Dara Mm -hmm. Cubs fan. Yeah. And that's I mean, when you talk about passions, that's always been obvious Mm -hmm. um, for you. You know, talk about your ties with with the Cubs and, and how. That brings you joy. If you're not playing NBA basketball right now, sports is still a big part of your life. So, you know what's funny? I'm like a fan, man. Like, you know, I do everything. I try to do everything like fans do. I mean, I don't. I ain't tailgating. I don't have to tailgate for Cubs game. But Wrigley, there's nothing like it. I don't care. Ain't nobody going to tell me. I think that's the that's the best stadium in the country as far as going to experience, especially baseball, as far as going to experience baseball. Wrigley, ain't nothing like Wrigley.
put it on the floor, goes to the hole! The Matrix thunderous dunk! Wow, he took off outside the lane. You know, one of the main reasons we're here, obviously, yeah. is going into the Ring of Honor. What was that phone call like when you picked up the phone and it was Matt Ishbia telling you that you are going into the Suns Ring of Honor? You know, Matt, Matt is special. Shout out to Matt. What's up, man? And um, when I tell you, like, the way you just was so, like, you just was like man tricks. Like, what I say? I'm, I'm not telling you something that shouldn't have been done a long time ago. And... He was just like, I'm a, uh, I was like, he's on my minimum work. I told you I'm going to do this. I'm making it happen right now. So we're going to get it done. I mean, it was just that simple. When you put the phone down, though, I mean, was there just a, a rebel yell? Like, yes, finally. Because that's what every Suns fan is saying, right? That's what Amari man, Stoudemire is saying, man, too. You know? you know, I'm in awe, man. You know, you know, it's, it's a testament to myself and the fans, of course, and the organization. But, like, I, we did a segment a long time ago, early in my career. I, like I told you, it was, I was meant for me to be a Phoenix Suns player. Like, I was going to MCC to play in the Mesa Tournament shootout when I was in junior college. And we had we had shoot around and at practice, we was able to go watch the Suns practice. I went on the court and I shot one shot. I, I shot a three-point shot. I was like, I'm gonna be here. Look, I'm a freshman in junior college at this time. So you fast forward now, two years, I'm getting drafted number nine by the Phoenix Suns. And like, I was like, it's amazing how destiny falls in place. And like, it was meant for me to be a Phoenix Suns player. It was written in the books. It was, that man up there wanted me to be a Phoenix Suns player, and that's what it was. And when you think about going in the same season as Amari, what does that mean to you in I mean, terms of the respect, too, for that seven seconds or less team? I mean, listen, you know, we, we, uh, you know, I came in before Amari and I watched him come in as a pup and uh, become um, stat. And, um, like you said, what do you call it? Standing tall and talented, right? You know, and, uh, you know, uh, listen, Mark was a beast, man, you know, and uh, I got to take my hand out to him, man. I think, uh, you know, what we did out there together was truly special. When you think about being part of that elite group, has it has it hit you or is it you're going to have to wait until that event when you actually see it? Because Oh, no, no, no. It's been hit me. Yeah. Tom, you know, during COVID, I was able to sit here. And I, I actually, me and my cousin and family and all these people, I, I had time to reflect on a lot of things. You know, when, you, when you're when you playing the, the game, it's going by so fast. There's so much going on. When you actually step away from it, it's when you have time to reflect on what you've done and what you've accomplished. I think if you really go back and look at my my work and and, um, and what I gave to this game, man, you know, I um, I truly believe I, I, I'm the reason for, I'm a big part of why the reason the game is what it is today. Like the things I was able to do at my size, though, man. I don't, I don't think, personally, I think I might be probably one of the best six, seven guys to ever played this game. Oh, to that is so, in the future, for Sean, any projects? Any? I mean, are you gonna be on any more TV shows? What was it? Amazing race with you and Sed Sabalos? <sighs> yeah, and, we did that. That yeah. was that was a fun experience. You know, it was challenging. It was a lot harder than people think, but. Right now, you know, I, I like being the owner, though. You know, you know, when my New Zealand Breakers came ready, we played we play a couple of preseasons against a couple of NBA teams this year. And then, uh, you know, my uh, pickleball team is doing really well, Ooh. DC Pickleball. And my soccer team, in Club Nacoxa, Mexico, doing pretty well as well. I truly, I, I, I do love, like, being an owner and uh, being able to to uh, dissect and uh, evaluate certain situations and stuff. And, and all three of them are totally different, different lanes and it's a different uh, business aspect and uh, a different approach. I haven't found anything I truly love as much as I love the basketball. And that's the, that's the void that's really hard for a lot of retired players to deal with. And, uh, you know, but I, I do love being a father too, though. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 is, that, that is something that's challenging and, and uh, it, it takes up a lot of a bulk of my time. So it, it, gets, the, it gets the first attention. Finally, if uh, there's one image, one thought that you hope that you've left in the minds of Suns fans, what is that as they look back on your career? I want the fans to know I, I um, every time I step on the floor, they know they got everything I could give it. And uh, if, I, if I had any left over, it would. It, it, it was because I was hurt. <laughs> but I wouldn't hurt a lot. No. No. <laughs> I wouldn't hurt a lot. So you got everything, every ounce of me on that floor and competed. And I just wanted to win. That's all. I, I, uh, I just wanted to win.